Okay, so I want to talk about object-oriented programming in Roblox and Lua and everything. And I want to kind of show a, uh, a big problem with it that is maybe more unique toward uh, Lua and serialization and how we can restructure it just a little bit and kind of fix everything. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to fix everything. Um, inspiration from this, uh, you could think of as really just going back to the basics of functional programming and structs and C and even Rust and the way it does things. You'll see. Okay, so we have a person class, and this is going to be our example through this. And what we have here is just a simple state. We have first name, last name, age. We have a method called a get full name, which just combines the first name and last name. And uh, the question is, what happens if we need to save an instance of this person or we need to send it from the server to the client or the client to the server? Um, can we do that? What happens if we do it? Okay, so the problem. Let's go to my script here. And um, so I, I'm grabbing that person class. I have a remote event called send person. And it has some hacky code just to wait for a player to exist, just with this example. And then I'm going to create a new person. And what I want to do is I want to send this person to that client. I'm just going to broadcast it to all clients. So I'm going to do send person fire all clients person. And then on the local script side of things, I have a similar code set up. And I have send person that on client event connect. I'll call it receive person. Okay, and I'm gonna print out person, person. I'm gonna print out the same thing on the client or on the server before I send it. So there we go. On the server, we create the person, we print it out and we send it. On the client, we listen and we receive it and we print it out. So if I run this code, I hit play. So it works, we got two things. So we have age, first name, last name. And on the client, we have age, first name, last name. So seemingly from what we're outputting, it worked, right? Okay, well, let's try it. So we have our person and we have get full name. Let's see if we can access the full name from the client. So we're gonna do person get full name. We're gonna run this code. And no, we get attempt to call missing method get full name. It did not work. The reason this did not work is because when we when we call methods like fire all clients, what Roblox has to do is serialize this information into something that it can pass along across the wire, so to speak, to the client. And the client needs to be able to have it in such a format that it can receive it and deserialize it back into its original structure, right? The serialization, deserialization. That's kind of the, the key words of all of this. The point being, meta tables are not serialized, right? So when we send a table over the wire or we put it in a data store, any sort of form where we need to serialize it, we you know, turn it into JSON or something like that, it's not going to do anything with the meta table. The meta table gets stripped out of it because that's special data it, that doesn't really belong to the table itself directly. Uh, what we end up with is just a flat table of first name, last name, and age, not anything with the meta table. And so even though it sends it over the wire, when we receive it on the client, we only get a portion of it. We don't get the meta table attached. And so that's a problem. So the question is, well, how, how do we fix that? And, and there's a couple ways we could do it. We could try to reconstruct it. We could say person equals set meta table person person, right? And so we, we could purposefully do that. And if we did that, we've reassigned the meta table. Now it, it should work. And there we go, we, we get John Doe. But this is all just so hacky, you know? This doesn't feel good. I, I, I shouldn't have to do that. It feels wrong. <laughs> And it is wrong. I, I think this is maybe a, uh, I mean, there have been some Roblox developers that have been vocal about this for years, but dare I say we've been going down the wrong path uh, by formatting our structures like this. We've been going down the wrong path in terms of cases where we really wanna be able to just have information that can be easily 
uh, passed through our data systems. It can be stored, it can be sent over the wire, you can send it over HTTP service, whatever. Um, if this is the way we are formatting our data, it, it's just, it's maybe too complex. And so I'm gonna propose a really simple change to this format that will simplify that whole process, will fix the whole serialization thing. And some people are gonna love it, some people are gonna hate it. Uh, after doing this for so many years, um, what I'm about to show you is just, ah, I like it so much better. It, it has simplified my coding experience within Roblox games significantly. This is the change. I'm gonna get rid of that meta table. I'm gonna get rid of that index. I'm gonna change this to dot notation and explicitly have my person table. And that's it. That's the whole change. And so I've ditched the meta table magic and instead I just have a flat data structure of my fields. And then I have basically utility functions that I can call and pass that person into. So now my script here, I can still do person.new, I can still send it. And on the other side, it's just expected that I'm going through the person helper table, I guess you could call it now, and then pass along the person object. So if I run this code, it's gonna work. Because again, it's just it's just flat data at this point. So John Doe and yeah. So that, that's the whole change right there. It's just a little shift. Get rid of the meta table, uh, change your methods into functions that take that object, and um, that's all there is to it. In fact, we're gonna take it a step farther. We're gonna define a type of person, we're gonna export it, and we're gonna define first name as a string, last name as a string, age as a number, and we're gonna get rid of this constructor entirely because it's simple. We, we could still use constructors, and if you have complex structures that need to be um, built in really special ways, a constructor method makes a lot of sense. But in our case, with data this simple, uh, we don't need it. We don't need it. Uh, what we can do is just have the person type, and we can say this takes the type of person, and we can be explicit, say it returns a string, although it should be able to um, infer that from our return statement here. And now in our script, you know, we don't have dot new anymore, but we can still say, well, person is a type of person dot person. <laughs> So it's this weird syntax we have to do to get exported types. And so this is just gonna equal struct. And you can see it's it's mad at me because I'm missing what's supposed to be in it. First name, let's change it to Jane Doe. And now we can just define it like that. Uh, and again, it's just the same stuff. So I hit run and there we go, Jane Doe. And so we've simplified things so much. We've gotten rid of all the meta table jargon. In terms of like writing more verbose code, it's really not that bad, right? Yeah, I have to maybe say person dot and then pass in the object. If you really hate that, I'm sorry, maybe this isn't for you. But in a lot of cases, it's not that bad. In fact, the more explicit nature of it can be good. It helps us really understand what's going on a little better. And uh, again, we've, we've disconnected the behavior from the state. And so the state can go anywhere we want and it's easily serializable. So we can do whatever we want in that case and then the behavior exists on its own in a different place. And so that's nice. And, and that also means that we can have different behavior for different things, right? So maybe the client has a whole other set of behavior functions that it can act upon a person or some other entire different system that wants to take in a person can easily do that and know what's there and everything. Uh, and so it's just, I don't know, a lot easier to reason about overall. I like this a lot better. Um, I've been using this for I don't know, the past year at least, and uh, have really enjoyed the experience of it a lot more than the more traditional object-oriented approach. You could still argue this is a form of object-oriented, right? Like at the end of the day, you still have um, some structure that ha holds state and you have some number of methods that act upon that structure. The difference again is that they're not bound together. And I would even go a step farther that say that Maybe you should make sure your data is immutable if you can. Maybe I call table.freeze on this person. So now I'm not allowed to modify anything. Now, I, again, I don't think that's gonna go over the network. So you might have to refreeze it on the other side still, but that could be a good practice is just making sure that 
your data is immutable. That helps you a lot. Yeah, I don't know if there's anything else other than that. It's it's really that simple, right? So we just took our old person class and we stripped it down to just the bare bones. And this table is just it's just a table of data and we pass that table to different functions that can perform things on that table. And we don't have to deal with meta tables. We can serialize the information. It's so much better. 